Hi everyone, Nathan here from Mighty Lancer Games and last week we brought you a, uh, a short video about our Indomitus set and the Imperial Fists that we've started painting and this week we're just going to talk a little bit about the Necron side of the box. So we're just going to talk a little bit about the Necrons that we've got here on the table which is all the stuff from the Indomitus set and a couple of extra bits that I've mixed in just to see how they work. Okay, so we'll talk you through it bit by bit. So Scarab Swarms really easy to put together they're just one or two parts that go straight onto the base the uh, score pet destroyer lord i think he's called he came in i don't know maybe 10 parts really easy not fiddly at all no tiny minuscule little pieces the score pet destroyers there's two there and there's one over here again really easy to put together uh, and impressive looking models considering how few parts they come in the uh, Warriors, let's talk about the Warriors. So there's 20 Warriors in the Indomitus set and they all come with an option to either give them the double barreled, I think it's a Gauss Flare or the single barreled gun. And a quick look in the Edge of Silence book that comes in the set tells you the difference between the two weapons. So one is better at closer range, but is a little bit more harder hitting. And the, uh, and the single barreled one's better at long range, more like the older style Necron weapons. Okay, so got all those stuck together, tried to avoid any duplicate poses, and uh, flexibility in the kit is pretty good in that if you do get the wrong arm to go with the weapon, you can quite easily uh, swap it out with one of the others. So that's all cool, very easy, about four or five pieces for each Necron warrior. Uh, took me a couple of hours to get everything stuck together. Okay, so what I have got, what you may have noticed here at the front, is we've got some old Necrons. So these are like the pre-Indomitus Necron kit, which are these guys on the Sector Mechanicus bases here at the front. But what I've done with these guys is I've used the spare weapons out of the Indomitus set to replace their original guns, which were the ones with the little green rods in. Uh, which I never really liked the look of, so I ne never finished building them. So I've chopped off the right arm, given them the right arm out of the Indomitus set, and with a bit of jiggery pokery, shall we say, made the left arm fit the gun. And I don't think they look too bad. So compared to the new Necron Warrior, so new Necron Warrior against old Necron Warrior with new gun, I don't think they look too out of place. And once they're painted, I think it'll be very hard to distinguish between the two especially in amongst a, a larger force. Okay, so I'm pretty pretty pleased with that, pretty pleased with that. So you might have seen our previous video where we undercoated these guys. So what we did was we undercoated them all with Army Painter Matte Black Spray, and then gave them a light coating over with Army Painter Plate Mail Metal, which gets them to the kind of finish that you can see here. And then what I've done with these other guys at this side of the table is we've just started with a couple of different washes just to show you the different finishes that you're going to get over that kind of base coat okay so this guy here at the front which hopefully we'll get you a close up of he's just plate mail metal with norm oil liberally applied all over him and uh, i think he looks pretty cool that was my original intention of what we were going to do with the models uh, these three here so the scarab swarm and the two warriors so they've actually got uh, this is without a label on this is basilicanum gray contrast paint which came without a label on so it's in my painting box and uh, i thought well let's see what that looks like and um, it's gone quite dull over the top of the things but it still looks pretty good so i think i might just uh, maybe do half a dozen of the models with that and then just dry brush them up to give a, a little bit of variation Seeing as these guys are supposed to have been asleep for 50,000 years, some of them are going to tarnished a bit differently to uh, some of the others. So these are my old school Necrons with new style weapons, so nothing special there particularly. This guy here, we've done him with some Agrax Earthshade just to see what difference it makes. So Ag let's go, Norm Oil guy and uh, Agrax Earthshade guy. So he's gone a lot more, what I think, the, the new Room Lord Brass colour looks like. So that again, it's plate mail metal from Army Painter with Agrax Earthshade over the top. I'm, I really like the look of that. So there's definitely going to be 
at least half a dozen of those guys in that colour scheme mixed in with the rest of the army just to give a little bit of colour variation. Pretty pleased with those. And then finally, over this side, what we've got is we've managed to get hold of some of the new Tesseract Glow technical paint uh, a little bit ahead of time. And this stuff, I was when it came out of the packaging and it had all separated, because it's obviously been in transit and storage, and it separated and in the middle was like a, like a Mountain Dew coloured liquid with some heavy green deposits but after a couple of minutes of shaking to get it up to this kind of consistency um, I put it on some models so this guy was the first one so I, I don't know whether you can see or you probably can't see but I dotted in his eyes and the little blobs on the side of the weapon uh, and then I did the same with the scarab swarm just on the back there so that's just one blob over the top of the uh, plate mail metal, just one blob of the paint. I'm sure you could probably get a deeper colour if you if you went over it again. And then I thought, well, I haven't tried it on a power weapon or a power blade, so let's try that. So I got one of the, another one of the warriors, and I blobbed it into the side of his gun, and then did it just a quick application on the blade on the end of his weapon. I thought, well, that's not really a big enough weapon, is it? So what we'd better do is try it on one of the Scorpet destroyers weapons, and that's just single coat. And the way it's shaded, very similar to the contrast paints. I'm just absolutely amazed how fantastic this thing is. This is going to change the way that I paint glow on all my models. I really hope that Games Workshop produce this in a variety of different greens and hopefully some other colours. Whatever they've done with this paint, it's absolutely fantastic. So if you apply that over white, I'm sure you'll get a completely different appearance. But over silver, I just think it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So, here's our little Necron Horde. I was digging through a box today and I found some other Necron Warriors that came out of the Forge Bane set. So I think what we might do eventually is uh, paint those guys up in the same colour scheme because they only ever made it as far as being grey plastic. And, uh, and then I think we'll have quite a serviceable Necron army for the store. So it's going to be a real simple paint scheme for these guys. So mostly Null oil, a little bit of Agrax Air Shade, plenty of this. Maybe a coloured stripe or two here and there to just indicate different things and a little bit more detail on the characters. Uh, and then we're going to base them all with some Armageddon Dunes. I think Armageddon Dunes or Armageddon Dust. Just one of the standard technical paints. Paint the rims of the bases and hopefully within a few days this will be a completed army. Which if, uh, if the effect of the... Agrax Earth Shade and the Null Oil or anything to go by will look really effective on the tabletop. Pretty pleased with it. I don't class myself as an amazing miniature painter, so getting stuff ready for the battlefield is uh, definitely key. Okay, so uh, summary these models are awesome. Hopefully, they're going to refresh some of the other Necron models in the same way. Really great. Indomitus is available as a made-to-order product now as well until the 30th of July. So if you've missed out on the first edition or the first launch, then uh, come over to the website, mightylancergames.co.uk, and you can pre-order for the December release when we expect the made-to-order stuff will arrive at a great price. So come on over, Mighty Lancer Games. Uh, get your hands on one of these awesome box sets. Thanks for watching.